In this portrait tutorial, I'll be painting one of my heroes, Oprah Winfrey, using gouache and only four colors known as the Zorn palette, red, yellow, black, and white. Let's just do a very simple sketch. Let's start off with our ball and shield. You can see the entirety of one side of her face, right? And then notice her jaw, like she's got a pretty prominent jaw and you can kind of see it go up to the side of her face. If I look at the width of her face, like from one cheek to the other cheek, you can see this part of her cheek right here to here. This distance is doubled with her hair. So the width of her hair is about the width of her face. So I'm gonna take this distance from here to here and I'm gonna double it. And then I'm gonna take that same distance and double it minus a little bit. Her hair on the right side is wider than the hair on the left. Put in the line of her eyes, somewhere in the middle. And her nose is kind of at the bottom of this circle. And she's got very full lips, so make sure we leave lots of room for her mouth. And from there I will try to sketch out her eyebrows. And now once I have her face sketched in, I can now modify this sphere a little bit more easily. For example, her forehead is a little bit thinner than this sphere. And now I can find the top of her head. I'm gonna guess that the top of her hair is about here. So now I'm gonna sketch out the shape of her hair. Don't worry about all of the texture, just kind of sketch out the shape. So I actually want to do a bit of a watercolor technique for her hair. If you're using watercolors, I would highly suggest having just like a little bit of salt so that you can play around with texture. If you wanted to tone your canvas so that you're not starting on white, what you can do is just tint it with a orangey color. So what I would do is I would just mix my yellow and red gouache colors and then add a tint, just a touch of black, but I wouldn't put any white. You can see I, I have this like brownish, reddish color. Then I would add water to it. You can see it's like a puddle now. And then what you can do is you can just give her entire face a tint of this brown. So that will give it enough context for you to keep going and not feel like you have to start with the white. And then if you wanted to, you can kind of lighten up her forehead by using a wet brush. I can do this easily because I'm using good paper, but if you're using like not so good paper or mixed media paper, it might start to pill. So you probably don't have too much leeway here with removing. So what I'm going to do for her hair is I'm going to do a wet on wet technique. I'm going to have to mix a lot of this black. So it's just going to be the black and the red. And then I'm going to tint it with the white and then I'm going to add water to it, make a puddle. This is like how I would do it with watercolor. I would make a puddle and then I would use it to dab into the water. I'm going to make a puddle that's just pure black. So essentially I want to recreate those three colors that I made for the hair. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet her hair. I kind of wanted to use more of a watercolor technique for her hair to make it soft and so that I don't have to paint all of those little curls. <laughs> I'm just going to suggest them and see how it works out. After you wet it, then what you can do is you can take your black, like the puddle, and then you want to try and put it in the dark areas first. And don't worry, like her earring, you can paint over it, right? So it's okay if the black runs a little bit. 
but I really like these soft edges that are starting to happen here. And then if you want softer edges, you can take your wet brush and just kind of go along the side and feather it out while it's still wet. Try to keep a harder edge along her face because you can always go in and blend it later, but try to keep the softer edge along the outside. You can also be more playful with the texture along the outside, so you can kind of take your brush and just give it a bit of texture. Okay, so then the top of her hair is more brown, right? So I'm gonna take this brown that I made, the same brown that I used to tint her face with, and I'm gonna start to put it in the top. I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of salt, see if that will help with the texture. And then just continue to do this and build up the deep colors in her hair. You can always go back in and soften that edge Just with a simple use of your brush and brushwork, you can kind of capture the texture of her hair. So now you can see how light her skin tone looks around the darkness of her hair. I'm probably going to get the blue in of her shirt. If you want to stick to a very kind of traditional Zorn palette, then just go for your black and white. The next thing I'm going to do is paint in the darker areas of her face because now if I squint at my piece and I squint at the reference, I can kind of see that the side of her face is a lot darker and her neck is a lot darker. Her photo there, when you squint at it, you'll see that her neck is just as dark as her hair. It's a different hue, but it's just as dark. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing an opaque skin tone using my yellow my red and my white. So I'm just mixing a very, very bright, very saturated skin tone. And I want to mix all of my skin tones before I actually go in and paint it. Because if I mix one, I paint it. Then I mix another and I paint it. The, the first one's already going to be dry and it's going to be hard for me to mix it. Now I'm going to go in and if you look at her cheeks, her cheeks are a warmer version of this. So I'm going to tint it a tiny bit of red. So I have a warmer version of her skin tone that's like slightly darker, but the same value. So now I'm going to go darker. So taking my pool of color here and I'm going to start to add some black. And as soon as I add black to this, you can start to see that it becomes a lot more desaturated and it doesn't look like a very nice skin tone anymore. I'm going to have to add more red to it and more yellow to it to really warm it up. And so I'm going to first test this dark color because it looks dark against the white, but once I put it on her face, it might look a little bit different. Once I put it on, I can take a second brush with some water and I can just kind of work that in and blend it. So this is almost like working with gouache as if it's watercolor. I'm just putting on a very transparent layer because I'm just testing out the color right now but you can kind of see it's bringing in that warm tone, but it's also making the black of her hair feel lighter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in her neck, right? Because it's a very big shape that is not as scary as putting in the rest of her face at this point. So let's paint in her neck first. Then I'm going to take my second brush with a little bit of water and then I'm going to blend in her neck line. I'm going to take this dark paint and I'm going to paint in the side of her face, just following along the contours, putting her ear in, giving her more of a cheekbone. And I'm probably going to put in this part in the side of her face with her nose. It looks really dark right now, but that's just because the tone underneath is very, very light. Now I'm going to go into my lighter color, which is already starting to mix, and I'm just going to paint in the transitions. 
It can be really scary and daunting to do this because it looks very blocky at first, but it will come together. So you can see I'm going from dark to light. I'm going lighter and lighter. One thing I want to point out about eyes is that the whites of the eyes are not actually white. And if you try to paint them really white, it's actually going to look very unnatural. So what I did right now was I just kind of blended the surrounding colors into the eye just to make sure that I don't have like a white outline once I'm done. While I let that dry, because if I went to paint the eyes on and it's still damp, then it's just going to bleed. So I really just have to make sure that this part is dry. So I'm gonna paint the mouth first and then come back to the eyes. You can kind of see her mouth is like a reddish purpley color. So red with a little bit of black, I'm gonna start at the corners of her mouth and just put in two darker spots in the corner. And then I'm gonna draw the line or go over the line of the bottom of the upper lip and then the bottom of the lower lip. Then I'm going to start to blend it up. So now I'm going to move on to my lighter red. Don't ever paint nostrils with a cold color. Like don't ever just use black and like go in and paint two dots, it's gonna look horrible. When you're painting nostrils, make sure that they're red. So start off with your red, tint it with a little bit of black. So it's not exactly a really, really dark solid color. It's kind of like a translucent dark red. Now that I have this dark red, I'm also gonna put some of it in the eyes. So in the corners of the eyes are also really warm. Adding that warmth is going to make the eyes feel more alive. So now if I look at her face, I can kind of see it's a little bit dull and I need to bring in some of those lights on her forehead, on her nose, on her cheeks. So to do that, I'm going to mix a brighter skin tone. And when you're mixing really bright skin tones, you do need uh, yellow and red and white. To try to keep it as saturated as possible. Okay, so now I'm taking the yellow. Once I put in the warmth of her face, her hair looks super flat. Just going around her face and making it darker is going to make her skin tone feel more real. I'm missing the purples in her hair. So basically mixing red into gray is gonna get those nice purple colors. So I'm gonna go in and just soften the edges around the hair. Okay, so for the earring, I'm just going to paint in two triangle shapes that are about the same value as her shirt. I'm gonna add a triangle shape to the top and I'm gonna leave the white of the paper because if I painted the gray and then I try to paint white on top, that white has to be really thick. Otherwise it's gonna mix with the gray. And then I'm gonna paint another triangle below this. And I'm gonna start to make that triangle a little bit darker at the bottom. The last thing I would do is really blend in your hair. You know, you never want a really, really sharp edge around hair because it's gonna look really unnatural. Those little details are really what's going to make a difference. Even though people, they can't tell what you did, they can kind of feel it intuitively. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload.
If you'd like to support the channel and the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon for behind the scenes perks and online classes at Wing Canvas. Join our art nerd community with the links down below. If you enjoyed this video, here are some other videos you can check out next.